everyone and welcome to a virtual class. My name is Evelina Zbanka. I'm a teacher at LIC Emir Chaliadi, and today we are going to spend some time together. As you see from the slide, we are going to pass to Unit 2, Lesson 5, from the English textbook English for Life. So open the textbook at pages 28-29, because we are going to travel in the world of civilization and we are going to tackle the topic of museums. Today we are going to get informed about the largest museum in the world, mind the pronunciation of some words, read a text about the British museums, speak about the exhibits displayed there, learn how to write an email. Look at the museum here. Which of them represents the British museums? A challenge for you. Be attentive. The first picture. Is this the second picture? Is this the third picture? Picture 3? No, no, no. Picture 3 represents the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C., the largest museum in the world. Its artifacts and memorabilia comprises more than 143 million items. The Smithsonian needs 17 separate museums to hold everything, like the National Museum of National History, the National Portrait Gallery, the National Museum of American Indians, the National Zoological Park, and many others. Are you still curious? Let's continue. If your answer is picture 1 and 2, you are right. These two pictures represent the British Museum, the first museum in the world. Now let us go to pronunciation. Mind the pronunciation of the words. You may pause the video and repeat after me. Elgin, Pantheon, Athens, Egyptian, Rosetta, Ramses, Gainsborough, Constable. Now suggesting some words for you to learn. Textile. A type of cloth or woven fabric, like you see in the picture. Wax. A sticky yellowish substance secreted by honeybees as the material of the honeycomb bees wax. What is an employee? The worker employed for wages or salary, like you see in the picture. Display. Make a prominent exhibition of something in a place where it can be easily seen. Now let us pass to the next task. Choose the correct verb to complete the description of the British Museum. Take the letter under the verb and put it into the box below the text. There are more verbs than necessary. The British Museum London has a lot of museums. There are museums of money, animals, time, textile, trains, ships, work sculptures, the river Thames, famous writers, theatre, everything. The British Museum was the first museum in the world. In 1753, when Sir Hans Sloan, a British physician and collector, the British government bought 71,000 objects of all kinds, including books, drawings, dried plants, coins and medals. From 15 January 1759, everybody could go and see them free of charge in the new museum. Today, the British Museum over 13 million objects. A visitor can, 2 miles, 3.2 kilometers, through 94 rooms. Nearly 1,200 employees for the museum and every year 6 million people. What can they see there? First of all, the visitors can admire the Elgin marbles, which is a collection of stones and statues. Which ones? The Parthian in Athens, Greece, which were brought to London in 1801. Secondly, they can see the cat mummies, which are some dead cats from the ancient Egypt and date from the 1st century AD. And the last, but not the least, the Rosetta Stone is on display in this museum. The Rosetta Stone helped people the language of Egyptians. 
And these are just some of the top items you can see on display at this London Museum. So I'm sure you've done it right. The British Museum was the first museum in the world. In 1753, when Sir Hans Sloan, a British physician and collector, died, the British government bought 71 thousand objects of all kinds, including books, drawings, bright plants, coins and medals. Today the British Museum has over 13 million objects. A visitor can walk 2 miles, 3.2 kilometers, through 94 rooms. Nearly 1,200 employees work for the museum and every year 6 million people visit it. What can they see there? First of all, the visitors can admire the Elgin marbles, which is a collection of stones and statues, which once decorated the Parthenon in Athens, Greece, which were brought to London in 1801. And the last answer, the Rosetta Stone helped people understand the old language of Egyptians. Now read the text again independently and match the exhibits mentioned in the text with the picture. The Elgin Marbles, a collection of stones and statues which once decorated the Parthian in Athens, Rosetta Stone that helped people understand the language of Egyptians, cat mummies from Egypt. Pause the slide and then Check yourself. These are the answers. The first picture, cat mummies. The next picture represents Rosetta Stone. And the last picture represents the Elgin marbles. Now answer the questions on the text. I know you will. What is the oldest museum in the world? When was the museum opened for the visitors? What were the first exhibits of the British Museum? What do the Elgin marbles represent? How old are the cat mummies? How many miles can all the visitors of the museum work a year? I think you can do this exercise independently. You just pause the slide and write the answers. Now let us go to an evaluation task. So what did you know before? What have you learned about the British Museum today? Take a pen and write the answers. I knew that. Two free sentences, please. I have learned that. Write in two free sentences. After you have done all this, let us learn how to write an email. For doing this, look at the email suggested. Imagine this. One of, friend, one of your friends is on holiday in London and sent you this email. But when you printed it, some of the words were missing. Fill in with the missing words. These are the missing words. British Museum, an entire afternoon, during about 10. Pause the slide, pause the video and fill in the exercise. Now, if you're ready, you may check your answers. 2. My friend from Anna, subject, the British Museum. How are you? I'm having an amazing time. Today I have been to the British Museum. When you come to London, you must visit it. You need to spend there an entire afternoon, as there are so many things to see and do in this museum. The museum has about 10 departments, but my favorite one is the Department of Asian, Egypt and Sudan, where I saw a colossal bust of Ramses II, Rosetta Stone and a collection of 140 mummies. And don't miss the Department of Prints and Drawings. I loved seeing, for the first time, the painting of some famous British painters such as Thomas Gainsborough, John Constable and J. M. W. Turner. I hope things are going well at home. I'll write again soon. Hugs, Anna. So, 
Let's study the structure of an email in order to be able to write an email yourself. So, as you see from the slide, it comprises the name of the recipient, the name of the sender, the subject, then the contact with the recipient that forms a paragraph even here, Description of the activity of the sender that forms another paragraph. Now you can continue with another paragraph and each idea forms a different paragraph. Each paragraph can be tended or you can skip a line between paragraphs. It's really important to know. Then you have to come with a closing line. Then you will come with closing remarks. Don't forget to use a comma. After you have followed all the steps and uh, you have seen the structure of an email, I think you can be ready to write an email yourself. But when writing an email, follow the steps. First, write the name of recipient, the name of the sent and the subject. Second, begin with a greeting like Dear Mrs. Dear Mr. or in informal mail you may write directly the name. Dear Anne. If the relationship is casual, you can simply say Hi Kelly. Thank the recipient, thanks for getting back to me or thank you for a prompt reply. The fourth point. State your purpose. So I'm writing to tell you or I'm writing to inquire you about or I'm writing in reference to the fifth point. Then you may move to another main text. Don't forget to skip a line between paragraphs or to intend the paragraphs. The next point. The last paragraph should be a closing one and should contain closing remarks like Thank you for cooperation or if you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to let me know. If the mail is informal, you may end with I look forward to hearing from you. By the way, after I look forward, after look forward, you should use the verb with the ending ing. And last but not least, end with closing. Best regards. Sincerely. Thank you. If the mail is informal, you may end with best wishes or cheers or Hugs. Write an email to a friend in another country. Recommend things to do near a town, village or in Kishinev. Follow all the steps recommended. So I wish you good luck. I think you can do it. It's all for today. And today we have been informed about the largest museum in the world and the oldest museum in the world. We have learned pronunciation of some words, we have enriched the vocabulary of some words, we have read a text about the British museums and have spoken about it, we have learned how to write an email. Thanks for joining, I hope you have worked productively well, stay healthy, stay safe, see you soon, goodbye.